Right, 26 hours till March 1st and the sequester hits. So is anyone in Washington going to do anything about it? None of these so-called budget cuts are necessary. The impacts of a sequester will be uh, onerous and severe. None of this panic is necessary. You're going to see a slowdown in our economy. And yes, you'll see services that will be delayed. It is not even going to be felt in reality. Within a matter of weeks, we're going to feel these cuts and feel them really, really painfully. I'm getting kind of annoyed at the president lining up uh, local police officers and saying their jobs will be lost when everybody knows their, their salaries are paid by local taxes. I find it fascinating that they're trying to blame each other for it. They all voted for it. What are you, crazy? This is not President Obama's sequester. When you've got a president that is, you know, constantly in the campaign mode, he never stays in Washington, D.C. to work. That'd be a great way to save some money for the taxpayer right now if you just stay at home in Washington, D.C. As ICE made clear yesterday, the agency released these low-risk, non-criminal detainees under a less expensive form of monitoring to ensure detention levels stayed within ICE's overall budget. Even before the sequester has gone into effect, he's released thousands of jailed, imprisoned criminals. It's absurd to think that the government can not get by with a little more than a 2% reduction in spending when every working American had to figure out how to make do with 2% less in their paychecks just last month. I've never in my life known a president who has escaped any accountability for four years until this guy came along. And tonight, former Congressman Alan West says President Obama needs your help with the sequester. He tweets, call, email, flood the White House with suggestions for cutting 2.4 percent since they've obviously too incompetent to figure it out. Congressman West joins us. Good evening, sir. Good evening, Greta. How are you doing? Very well. So you think your call to arms will have any impact? Are we going to get the people emailing and calling the White House? And uh, if so, are they going to listen? I think they will listen because obviously we don't have any leadership coming out of Washington, D.C. And let's be very honest, Greta. I don't know if you still have it sitting there, but that GAO report that talked about 200 to 300 billion dollars of wasteful, redundant programs in Washington, D.C. So that's a great place to start. $85 billion is not going to effectively shut down the United States government. We're not going to have to worry about meat inspectors or planes falling uh, from the sky. As a matter of fact, this week, Greta, you had Ben Bernanke that was testifying up there on Capitol Hill, and he talked about because we have such a lackluster recovery, we're going to have to continue on with federal stimulus. What he really is not telling the American people that we're printing money to the tune of $85 billion a month so that we can buy up our own mortgage, back security debt, and also treasury bonds. So, again, the numbers are just not adding up, and you are starting to see a, a level of ridiculousness coming out of Washington, D.C. that really has to cause the American people a lot of concern. All right. Well, the other day or the other week, um, it was announced that the uh, Truman, uh, which is an aircraft carrier, would not be deployed um, to the Persian Gulf um, because of money, because of sequestration. Um, do you buy that that was a legitimate reason? Um, are they short of cash? Are we short of cash at our, in our defense? Absolutely, because one of the things you have to understand, part of the Budget Control Act was $487 billion of cuts to the Department of Defense over the next 10 years. And that's taking care of the fraud, the waste and abuse, streamlining research and development programs, acquisition programs, which without a doubt was needed. As you know, the first time you had me on was because I found wasteful programs in the DOD budget. Now you're talking about an additional 45 to 46 billion dollars per year on the Department of Defense. And now that's going to start to hit what is called the operation and maintenance budget. And during the Clinton years, when I was a brigade uh, operations officer at Fort Bragg, we felt those uh, cuts down there because you did not have enough money for repair parts for your equipment. You did not have enough money for ammunition so you can go out and properly certify and train your crews. I was an artillery officer. So these things are really going to be felt in the United States military, which, if you understand the preeminent responsibility of the federal government, is to provide for the common defense so that we can secure the blessings of liberty, liberty for the American people. Well, I remember you mentioned the first time you appeared. Um, you were a freshman member of Congress. It was 30, about $30 million of waste in the Pentagon's budget, and you had a unanimous uh, vote on but Democrats and Republicans voted because nobody wanted to see that $30 million wasted. Why can't we do that with all the other incredible waste in this town? Well, you know, it's interesting to say you would think that a guy that served 22 years in the United States military sitting on the House Armed Services Committee 
he would look at the Department of Defense as a sacred cow, and I don't see it that way. And I want to prove that here's something near and dear to me. I have relatives that are still in the military, but I know that there are places where we could find savings. So if we had every single member of Congress being at the House or the Senate in their committee of jurisdiction, go in and do exactly what I did, I don't think that you'd have to worry about the extraordinary amount Why of overspending that, happen? that we have. Why didn't that happen? It, comes it back seems to like, leadership. I mean, everybody it comes hates back waste. To leadership. It comes back to leadership, Greta, and that's the thing that is missing. That's the thing that is lacking. And resolute leadership that will tell the American people that we do have a spending problem. When you have individuals in Washington, D.C., in positions of supposed leadership that won't even admit that you have a spending problem, that's the first thing. It's kind of like going I, to Alcoholics Anonymous. But I don't, I don't even hear a lot of Republicans championing a particular waste. I don't, I don't see them going sort of line by line through these budgets either. I mean, I hear them sort of say we have a lot of waste. But, I mean, like what you did was you actually went, found the $30 million, and everyone is appalled, and everyone voted your way. Um, you know, so, I mean, there was no one that resisted it. So I don't get why that isn't being done by other members now with other budgets line by line. Well, hopefully they're looking and they're listening right now, and maybe uh, they'll stay in Washington, D.C., and they'll decide in their committee of jurisdiction to get a piece of the budget. But first of all, you've got to understand something. It's been 1,400 days since we've even had a budget up in Washington, D.C., so that's the first place where we need to start is the House and the Senate passing a budget that uh, everyone can go through line by line and making sure that we get rid of that fraud, waste, and abuse across all the agencies in Washington, D.C. Um, you know, it's, I thought it was sort of interesting, Senator Mitch McConnell saying that last uh, month everyone lost 2% in his paycheck because of the increase uh, in pay that when the tax cuts, um, or a lot of people did. And we're asking in the sequest sequestration 2.4% cut. It's about the same. And we and and yes, people actually learned to live with it. Yes, it's about the same, but really, you know, if you understand the baseline budgeting, it may not even be that 2.4 percent because you're really cutting an increase of the uh, the spending that's going to occur. So we need to go to a zero-based budgeting system. That's one of the first things we have to do. And once again, it comes back to leadership. You know, it is very troubling when I see the president and others that are going out and trying to scare and intimidate the American people. That's not what leadership does. Leadership recognizes that you have a problem. They come up with viable solutions, and they tell the American people that we're going to get this thing under control so that we can protect the future for our children and grandchildren. That's what's most important. Congressman, thank you, sir. Always a pleasure, Greta. Thank you. Nice to see you. Congressman